Uh, hi, my name is Barbara Morgan, and I am a professor at the University of Alaska Southeast Ketchikan campus and get to teach a bunch of different biology classes there. And I grew up in Southeast Alaska and actually grew up playing on and then also eating a bunch of the different things that you can find on the beach, which include things like um, gumboot chitons and lady slipper chitons, uh, different kinds of sea urchins and sea cucumbers, clams of various different kinds, although they have, they have a PSP risk, and a whole bunch of different kinds of seaweed. A lot of this green stuff you can see right here is sea lettuce, um, black seaweed, bull kelp. There's a lot of things that you can eat on the beach. Actually, there's a saying that when the tide goes out, the table is set. And that's pretty apt because there is a, a lot of different things that you can eat in the intertidal area between extreme high tides and extreme low tides. You can find a bunch of different edible things. Projection, that's the horn, which is why they call the horn mouth. So this is a leafy horn mouth, not edible, but they're really cool. Some kind of dog winkle. And there's a few different kinds. I'm not quite sure which kind this is. Also probably not edible. You can eat both of them in a starvation situation survival situation, but mostly they're just fun. This is a little red rock crab. Um, it's red, you can see, and the tips of its uh, claws are black. So when these get bigger, they can get so that the back of the carapace is about that, that far across, and those are edible. This guy, not much so like right now, but he'll get big if I let him go. This is a, a kind of a limpet. It's um, got some of this pink coralline algae on it, and eventually that probably will cover almost all the whole top. And this is edible. This whole foot area here is actually pretty delicious. Um, you can see his mouth in here and a couple of his like sensory tentacle things going on. Inside of his mouth, he has a specialized kind of tongue thing called the radula that has magnetite teeth on it that he uses to scrape the encrusting algae off of the rocks and eats that, which is not toxic. It's not a PSP risk. So eating limpets like this guy is safe even in the middle of the summertime when PSP can be an issue with bivalves. Field of sea urchins here, and they are actually echinoderms and have pentaradial symmetry, the same as sea stars and um, sea cucumbers. Um, they're all in the same family, they're echinoderms. This is a little teeny green one, which uh, they get a little bigger, about like this big is about as big as I've seen them. Um, Strongulus introdus drombachiensis is the scientific name. And you can eat the roe out of these, which there actually is still a little bit of roe in this one. Or gonads, actually, people call it roe, but it's actually the gonads because the males and females both are edible. Um, and that is actually really very highly desired um, that's called uni, and people pay a lot of money for that. People don't know that you can eat the uni from the green sea urchins. Um, a lot of people, there's actually a commercial harvest for the, the uni from um, the purple sea urchins, which gets much bigger, but the uni in the green sea urchins is also highly desired. This is a gumboot chitin, and the foot is edible, and this is the mouth right here. So again, radula, magnetite teeth, eats the encrusting algae off of the rocks, and so it is always safe, no PSP risk. And on this one, you can see the center of each of the eight butterfly-shaped shells that go across the back. And the way that you do these, actually, is that you take them just like this. It's good to give them a quick kind of rinse and get some of this debris off of them and you put them into a kettle with just a little bit of water or no water and you cook them stirring them constantly until this black part starts to blister a little bit and then at that point you take them out and put run them underneath some lukewarm water and then use your fingernail or brush whatever butter knife to scrape off the black part which has been blistering pop all of the shells out and then you have a groove with all of the internal organs in it that you can clean that out and then you eat all of the rest of it and you can eat it just dipped in grease um, traditionally it's um, just dipped in grease which is either seal oil or uh, um, hooligan oil um, you can also just dip them in butter melted butter or whatever else you want to use some kind of uh, soy sauce or wasabi or whatever um, and they're actually quite good. People also take them after they've done all of that prep part and slice them fairly thin and pickle them. These are California sea cucumbers, or red sea cucumbers, Parasticopus californicus, and they are edible, which is really kind of bizarre seeming because 
that does not scream um, eat me I'm really tasty just looking at it but they are actually echinoderms as well they have pentaradial symmetry mostly they are full of water and when they contract their muscles they um, become a little more firm to clean them you cut off either end and then all of their guts their innards um, and the water falls out you slice them open and on the inside of them are five long white muscles which is how they contract and those five long white muscles you can peel them out and then um, use them you can you can kind of do a bread breading a light, very light breading like just flour or salt pepper um, and then deep fry them and they taste a lot like clam strips uh, a really highly desired um, critter and there's a, a commercial dive fishery for them as well okay so here are blue mussels mitilus edulis and they are edible however they are a filter feeder which means that they take seawater in through one of their siphons um, they pull out the parts of the the phytoplankton or microalgae that they want to eat and then they get rid of the rest of it and that's a great lifestyle for them there's a lot of phytoplankton in the water around here but there is one species of the phytoplankton um, called alexandrum catenella that causes paralytic shellfish poisoning or psp and that's a huge risk. Um, the, the saxitoxins, which is a whole suite of different molecules that uh, are collectively called saxitoxins, are a nerve toxin and it paralyzes you. Um, that can be deadly. And so if you eat mussels or any other bivalve, uh, during the summer in particular, when they're most likely to have the PSP in them, um, you could die. So they're edible, um, they're really tasty in fact, but they are very risky. They do actually, when they uptake the toxin, um, the, the Alexandrum catenella is toxic, but each um, cell doesn't actually hold that much toxin in it. You could, eat, you could drink a gallon of seawater and not get enough toxin to cause you problems. But the bivalves, including the mussels, concentrate all that toxin into their flesh and then when you eat it you are getting the toxin from millions of the alexandrium so i'm going to dig here and see if there's some clams of whatever kind and i'm pretty certain that there's going to be clams because there are all these holes in the beach and periodically they can spout water um, there are other things that do make holes like that um, various different kinds of worms so we might find other interesting things as well I'm hoping to find butter clams and or little net clams, potentially cockles. All three of those are edible, although PSP risk with all three of those as well, too. So let's see what we can find. This is a small butter clam, Saxodomus gigantea, which it's not very gigantic, but they do get bigger and they are edible. They have concentric rings along um, their surface. This is is a small one but the right butter clams and this is one of the more desirable kinds of clams that we have in the area so the little neck clams have the concentric circles and then also these radiating lines that you can kind of see they're really fine so that is prototheca staminia little neck clam those are really edible too really tasty um, and again, and I can't say this often enough, but they have a PSP risk as well. So they might be toxic and they could kill you. And they really taste good. It's kind of a problem. This is beach greens or beach chickweed, you can call it. And the nice tender green parts, especially the centers like that, are really tasty. Slightly salty. The leaves are a little bit thick, but still really nice and um, tender and Juicy. This is beach asparagus, and it is and otherwise it's also called glasswort, salicornia. There's a lot of sea, sea beans. It's tempting if you're trying to harvest a lot of it to just grab handfuls and rip it off, but if you rip it out by the roots, it can't regrow. And so if you use scissors or a knife or carefully break them off like this, then you are leaving the rest of the plant so that it can regrow, and you don't want to harvest the whole plant anyway. Just take a few pieces off of it. 
A good rule of thumb actually when you're harvesting anything is to not take more than 5% of what's there. If you find a really big patch, don't even take 5%. Um, so this is beach asparagus. It's really high in silica. So the cell walls of it, and the, the cells of the beach asparagus have silica in them, which gives it a really interesting crunch to it. Silica is uh, one of our essential nutrients. It's a mineral that we need to have. And so it gives us an opportunity to have that. Um, it is uh, really kind of a strange plant. This is the stem. It doesn't really have leaves. It just has stems that are green. It's nice and salty. Nice crunch to it. You can eat it raw. You can blanch it, just a quick blanching, and then freeze it for later. You can can it and then like in jars and eat it later. It's pretty versatile and really tasty. So this is beach asparagus. So this is goose tongue and uh, it's a, a bunch of leaves that would just come out from one, one kind of common point, big kind of opens out and springs open. And when you pick it, you can tell it's goose tongue because the edges of the leaf are curled upwards slightly. And so the, there's a groove the length of the whole leaf. And you want to pick it when it's fairly young and tender. Um, pops pretty, the, the, pretty easily. The leaf is kind of thick and fleshy and um, a little bit salty to the taste. You can eat it fresh. Um, in cross-section, the leaf is kind of triangular shaped as well. Um, you can use it pretty much like spinach. So you can just wash it and put it straight into a salad. You can saute it with onion, butter, bacon, whatever. Um, you can put it in soups or stews. Um, basically any way that you would use spinach, you can use goose tongue. The important thing is just that you do know that you actually have goose tongue. There's something that actually looks quite similar um, that's not goose tongue that can be toxic. It's called uh, arrowgrass. And when you pick arrowgrass, you know it's arrowgrass because when you smell it, it smells quite a lot like cilantro. Beach is, um, goose tongue does not smell like cilantro at all. It's actually just smells kind of green, very mild smelling. So goose tongue is good. No smell of cilantro. Arrowgrass can be toxic if it is growing in a place that has not much water. Um, and so you don't want to eat that and that smells like cilantro. Yum. So thank you for coming out with me and checking out what's going on on the beach here. Um, as you can see, different areas on the beach have different kinds of living organisms on them. And so if you know where to look for different things you want to eat, you can kind of target those kinds of habitats.